Eight Maids a Milking A Christmas Romance by Caitlin Lynch. Narrated by Catherine Bilson. Chapter One Your destination is on the left, the calm voice of the GPS announced, and Zane swore, breaking as hard as he dared with the fully loaded trailer behind his truck. The gateposts still flashed by long before he could slow enough for the turn. Ugh! His hands clenched on the wheel. Turning around with the trailer was never easy, and with the snow beginning to fall, it would be even less so. Where the hell am I going to find a turnaround? The GPS was no help, already telling him to make a U-turn, a complete impossibility on the narrow country road. He would just have to keep going for a little while and hope he could find a large gateway to turn around in. Zane's luck was in, apparently, because he hadn't even gone a mile when a large sign on his left announced Pining for You, Christmas Tree Farm and Function Centre. And, blessedly, a huge car park in front, with all the room in the world to turn around his truck and trailer. Legends, he murmured, flicking on his indicator and checking the opposing lane was clear before making the turn. In fact, he might make a quick stop, because unless his eyes were deceiving him, that was an open coffee shop. Which, after the seven-hour drive he'd just completed, he was desperately in need of. I'll be five minutes, girls, he said into one of the open trailer windows. A chorus of bleats answered him, and he grinned, hurrying to the coffee shop through the steadily increasing snow. Hi! The woman behind the counter beamed at him. What can I get you? Coffee, Zane said, aware he possibly sounded like a zombie. Please, he added belatedly. Sure thing, hun. Black? Largest go cup you have, please, he confirmed with a nod. I got you. Anything to eat? He considered the glass counter and decided it wouldn't be a bad idea to take something to eat as well. Save him trying to cook, or just going to bed exhausted on an empty stomach. He got the server to pack him up a toasted sandwich and a ham and cheese croissant he could heat for breakfast. Back in the truck, he turned around easily and headed back the way he'd come, slower this time, keeping an eagle eye out for the gateway he was looking for. Within five minutes, he was driving up to his new home, grinning triumphantly as he pulled the truck up in front of the handsome red barn. Time to get the girls settled, and then he could eat and hit the sack himself. The barn should be all ready. The seller had sent him photos of the thick bed of straw that had been laid down in one half of it, the tractor also included in the sale, standing silent sentinel on the other side. His girls would be safe and warm here for a few days, while he made sure the fencing was adequate to keep the little madams from roaming too far. Hopping out of the truck, Zane reached for the barn door, frowning as he realised it was already slightly open. And the light was on inside. What the heck, he muttered, opening the door wider and stepping inside. It looked exactly as it had in the photo, silent and empty, waiting for his arrival. Except for the pair of denim-clad legs sticking out from under the tractor at an awkward angle. Zane's heart just about stopped. Was there seriously a dead body in his barn? He stepped forward on faltering legs. Stooped down, hesitating a moment before tapping on one brown cowboy boot. Hello there. The legs jerked, there was a loud clang, and then a female voice said, Ouch! What in the... Who are you? I could ask you the same thing, considering you're in my barn, Zane said, half amused, half annoyed. Definitely relieved, now he knew the owner of the legs was alive. The boots scrabbled at the floor as their owner pushed her way out from under the tractor and a pair of blue eyes examined Zane. Oh, you're the new owner. I thought you were arriving tomorrow. She sounded annoyed, which pissed him off. It was his barn. Which explains why you felt free to trespass. He folded his arms across his chest and frowned. I had to. With a sigh, the woman pushed herself to her feet, 
dusted hay off her back, a losing proposition as she was absolutely covered in it, and offered a distinctly grubby hand to shake. Hannah Rockford. Zane Gold. He shook her hand, suddenly aware that despite being filthy and having hay sticking out of her hair and all over her clothes, Hannah Rockford was very attractive, probably about his own age of thirty, with clear blue eyes and short dark curls framing a pretty face. I don't suppose you could give me a hand? Hannah gestured back at the tractor. With what? He was still entirely in the dark. The kittens! She blinked at him and then grinned, a dimple flashing in her cheek and making her about three times as pretty as he was already thinking she was. I'm sorry, I've skipped ahead about three steps. I'm so used to everyone around here knowing who I am and what I do. I run the local animal rescue. We help quite a few properties around here control their feral cat populations with a TNR, that's Trap, Neuter and Return, policy. We thought we'd taken care of all the cats here, but Andy Harris, the old owner, called me yesterday in a flap, saying he'd seen kittens. So I'm here to get them. Ah. Light dawned. Zane shrugged. They could stay. I don't mind, and I'm pretty sure my goats won't care. I care! Hannah put her hands on her hips and glared at him. If any of them are female, they'll have two to four litters a year until their bodies give out. I've dealt with feral colonies which had population explosions of up to 200 cats within a couple of years of starting with a single pair. You want to deal with that? He did not. And he also realised that if he wanted to unload his goats tonight, he was going to need to help Hannah catch the kittens and get them out of his barn. A loud bleat from the trailer made his mind up for him. What do you need me to do? Hannah's dimpled grin broke out again. I've got the kittens cornered, I think. You can help get them out from under the tractor and into the carrier. I'll leave a trap for the mama cat, and you can check it a couple of times a day and call me if we catch her. Will they be all right away from their mother? He walked around the tractor as she directed. Aren't young kittens a lot of effort to bottle feed? Sure, but I gotta look at these. They're not that young. Old enough to start solids if they haven't already. I'll supplement with the bottle feed if they need it, but they're not newborns who need the bottle every two hours. Hannah had dived back under the tractor again. Right there, Zane. Bend over and reach in. You should have your hand right on one. A furious hiss greeted him, and a set of tiny needle claws swiped across the back of his hand, but he didn't let go, and a moment later was triumphantly holding up an enraged miniature black panther. Well, hello there, little buddy. This is your eviction notice. Hannah laughed breathlessly from under the tractor. I've got another one. She ran right into me trying to get away from you. Can you take her out of my hand and put her in the carrier? There's one more. Ten minutes later, the panther and two tiny tabbies huddled together in the carrier, spitting with rage every time either human approached. Hannah tossed a blanket over them and set up a cat trap under the tractor. The mother took off when she saw me, but I hope she'll come back once things are quiet. Please check in the morning and call me. She handed Zane a card. Sure. He tucked the card in his pocket, rather glad to have both her number and an excuse to call her. While you're here, I don't suppose you could spare me ten minutes. What do you need? She paused from picking up the carrier full of angry kittens. I've got eight hungry goats in my trailer to unload. Could you give me a hand to get them settled? Of course, she grinned at him. Let me put the kittens in my car. Don't want to leave them too long or they'll get chilled, but I can give you ten minutes. Unloading went quicker with the two of them. Hannah was capable and calm and obviously familiar with farm equipment, quickly bolting together removable panels to fence in the back of the trailer and barn door to prevent escapees, and soon his girls were trotting down the ramp and inside their new home with happy, curious bleats. Angora? Hannah asked, slipping around the fence to stand beside him at the door. 
the app. Zane beamed at his pride and joy. His lead doe, Maid Marion, trotted boldly up and lipped at his hand before looking up at him and letting out a loud, demanding bleat. Loud and clear, Marion, loud and clear. Laughing, he headed up into the trailer to open the locked metal feed bin and dish up their dinner. They're beautiful. Zane glanced over his shoulder to find Maid Marion was allowing Hannah to pet her. Thank you. Maid Marion's a state champion. Oregon, not Washington, that is. This is my foundation herd for a new farm. All girls? Hannah scratched behind Marion's ears, and the white goat sighed happily and leaned against her legs. Yes, a buck's coming, but not until spring, because they're all already pregnant. He's not related to any of them, so my plan is to keep all the daughters and their mothers. He set down the buckets and poured feed into each of them, nudging the goats away gently as they tried to push him out of the way in their eagerness for dinner. Good plan. Avoid inbreeding right from the jump. Hannah nodded approvingly, stepping back to the door and watching as he moved around his little herd, checking each of them over quickly. Well, I wish you many daughters. Zane chuckled. Thanks. And I wish you fewer kittens. Definitely fewer kittens. We're winning the war with TNR round here. I've had far fewer litters to deal with this year than the last few, but it's never ending. Hannah waggled her fingers at him. I need to get those babies warm and fed. Laters. Later. He watched her go, appreciating the way her jeans fit snugly to well-rounded hips. At least until Maid Marian butted him, demanding his attention. Have you finished your dinner already, you greedy madam? What am I going to do with you? Laughing, he bent down to rub her silky ears. Marion butted him again, almost pushing him out the door. Leave you to get settled into your new kingdom and go to sleep. Sounds like a plan to me. With a last pet to her ears, he closed the barn door and headed for the truck to grab his overnight bag. He'd park the trailer and worry about everything else in the morning. Chapter 2 Hannah couldn't seem to stop checking her rearview mirror as she drove away from the old Harris farm. She guessed it was the gold farm now. Gold's goats, she murmured with a quiet laugh. Somehow, she really hadn't expected the guy who'd moved to a small farm in Leavenworth to raise Angora goats to be as young and good-looking as Zane Gold. She shook her head, trying to clear her mind of such distracting thoughts. She had kittens to take care of and a busy schedule at the animal shelter. But as she drove back to Leavenworth, her thoughts kept drifting back to Zane and his charming smile. As she pulled into the shelter's parking lot, she took a deep breath and prepared herself for a busy afternoon. But as soon as she walked through the doors, her co-workers bombarded her with questions about the kittens she had rescued. Are they healthy? How old are they? Do we have space for them? Hannah tried to answer all the questions at once as she headed through to the intake room, where she would check the kittens for fleas, ear mites, ringworm and general health. Oh, they're so cute! Talia, a teenage volunteer, clutched at her heart and squeaked, as Hannah uncovered the carrier. Feral little beasts. They'll need a lot of socialising. Are you ready to foster another litter? Hannah asked. Talia shook her head regretfully. Mom said not until after graduation. No kittens. We can look after one or two of the older cats post-surgery until return, though. Good to know. Still hoping to get the mama of these. Maybe you can take her for recovery after her spay. Hannah grabbed a fresh towel and cautiously opened the lid of the carrier, reaching in to scoop one kitten up in the towel. Oh, they're pretty cold. Could you fill a hot water bottle for me? You got it. Talia vanished to heat some water, leaving Hannah in peace and quiet. At least until the tiny tabby female squalled and bit her thumb with its tiny needle teeth. Hannah hissed in pain and quickly wrapped the kitten in the towel, trying to calm it down. She couldn't help but smile at its tiny, fierce determination. 
As she finished checking the kittens for parasites, Talia came back with the hot water bottle, and together they set up a warm and cosy space for the kittens to rest in. I wish I could take them all home, Talia said wistfully, peering into the carrier. Hannah chuckled. I know the feeling, but we'll find them all good homes soon enough. The rest of the day was a blur of activity as Hannah tended to the various animals at the shelter, taking care of the sick and injured and ensuring the others were fed and comfortable. By the time she clocked out, she was exhausted but satisfied with the work she had done. As she walked out to her car, she couldn't help but think of Zane and his goats. She wondered how they were settling in and if he needed any more help. Part of her wished she could go back and check on them, but she knew she had to prioritise her own responsibilities. As she drove home, she wondered if Zane was single, and if he was, whether he would be interested in her. The idea made her heart race with excitement and nervousness. But as she pulled into her driveway, she pushed those thoughts aside. She had her own life to live, and she couldn't let herself get distracted by a handsome goat farmer. The next day at the shelter, Hannah found herself daydreaming about Zane more often than she'd like to admit. She even caught herself doodling goats in the margins of her paperwork. When her shift was over, she knew what she had to do. She got in her car and headed back to the gold farm. The big trailer had been neatly parked in the open-fronted shelter beside the barn. She couldn't see Zane's truck, but there was a garage attached to the house, so she assumed he'd parked it inside. Pulling up in front of the house, she got out, glancing from the porch to the barn, wondering where he'd be more likely to be. She couldn't see any lights on in the house, so she headed for the barn, edging the door open only a crack in case of any attempted escapes from the goats. Hello, she called. Zane? Hannah? His voice sounded from right behind her, and she yelped with shock, clutching at her chest and stumbling backwards into him. Ah, oh, you nearly gave me a heart attack. Sorry. He caught her elbow to steady her, laughing. I didn't mean to startle you. Face to face with him again, she didn't know where to look. He had a ruggedly handsome face, sandy blonde hair, laughing light brown eyes. This close, she was suddenly very aware of how broad his shoulders were. Farm strong, she thought, a man who could carry a hay bale in each hand and work from sun up to sun down in all weathers without faltering. How are the kittens? he asked. Um, what? Oh, the kittens! Doing fine. They're all girls. We've saved you from a population explosion. Now we just need to catch Mama Cat. She was babbling, Hannah recognised, but she couldn't seem to shut up. Didn't you get your message? What? I thought you got here rather quickly. I left a message for you, maybe ten minutes ago. I think we caught the mother cat. Zane grinned at her, and Hannah fished her phone from her pocket, muttering a curse under her breath as she saw the missed call icon on the screen. There's a dead spot in between here and Leavenworth. You must have called when I was driving through it. I was coming to put more food in the trap, but if the mother's in it, I won't need to. Come look, then. Zane opened the barn door wide enough for them both to slip inside. The goats looked up. They were all nestled comfortably in the straw, except for the big white one Zane had called Maid Marian. She was over by the tractor, head down, peering into the cat trap. Get away from it, Marian! Zane laughed, nudging his goat away. There. He gestured proudly at the fat ginger cat in the trap. There's Mom Cat. That is not Mom. Hannah failed to hold in her laughter. Oh, he deflated. How do you know? Well, apart from the fact that ginger females are pretty rare. Hannah pointed at the cat. See how the tip of one ear is flat? That means the cat has already been neutered and returned. We snip the ear tip off so we can easily spot who's already been taken in. That's Mr. Magoo. I trapped him a couple of years ago. Hannah bent over the trap, shaking her head as she released the door. 
and multiple times since. He has no sense of danger with traps. Push off, Mr. Magoo. To her surprise, Mr. Magoo didn't flee as he normally did when released from the trap, but came ambling out slowly, making a beeline for Maid Marian, who bleated but didn't move, lowering her head and sniffing curiously at the cat. The two bopped noses, and a loud purring suddenly filled the barn. Look at that! Zane began to laugh. I think Maid Marian's found a new friend. Hannah chuckled too, shrugging out of her backpack and digging around in it for a food bowl and pouch of wet food. I've seen less likely friendships. We'll see. He might stick around for the winter at least. He's a good ratter, worth feeding, but I wouldn't try to pet him, she warned, as Zane stooped to attempt just that. At least one of the permanent scars on my wrists is courtesy of Mr. Magoo. Gotcha. Zane backed off. Will the momcat come back if he's here, though? Don't know, but maybe. She'll be looking for her kittens. I'm putting this blanket in there they slept on last night, so it smells of them, and a whole tin of tuna. Fingers crossed Mr. Magoo will be happy with that pouch I just gave him, and not raid the tuna. Hannah reset the trap as she spoke, and pushed it back under the tractor. If he's in the trap in the morning, call me. We can take him in for a couple of days to keep him out of the way while we're trying to catch the mom. Zane nodded, a grin spreading across his face. Sounds like a plan. You really know your stuff when it comes to animals. Hannah shrugged, feeling a sudden warmth in her cheeks. It's just part of the job, you know. But thanks. The two of them made their way out of the barn and back towards the house, chatting easily about the various animals they had encountered over the years. As they walked, Hannah couldn't help but notice the way Zane's eyes crinkled up when he laughed, and the way his hand brushed against hers as they walked. By the time they reached the front porch, Hannah was feeling a flutter of excitement in her stomach. She couldn't remember the last time she had felt this way about someone. Well, Zane said, turning to her. Thanks for coming by and helping with the trap. And for rescuing those kittens yesterday. You're quite the animal hero, Hannah. Hannah laughed, feeling slightly embarrassed. I'm no hero. I just love animals. And incidentally, how would you feel about a charming dog to keep you company and help you herd goats? I might not be averse to that idea, if you've got a dog in mind. Should I come into the shelter to meet him? Sure. Hannah took a quick, nervous breath. Maybe you'd like to grab a coffee after. The witch's brew in town is a bar, but they serve coffee and snacks too. Sounds great. Tomorrow? He leaned on a post at the side of the porch steps. I'd invite you in for a coffee now, but I have literally no furniture. Everything's on a truck still, won't get here until tomorrow. I'm sleeping on an air mattress. Hannah felt her heart racing as he looked at her expectantly. Tomorrow works for me, she said, trying to keep her voice steady. Meet you at the shelter at ten? Perfect. Zane grinned at her, and she felt her cheeks heating again. I'm looking forward to it. Me too. Hannah turned to go, feeling a little unsteady on her feet. She had never been one for casual flirtation, but something about Zane had her feeling like a teenager with her first crush. As she got into her car and drove away, she wondered if it was too soon to start planning what to wear. Chapter 3 The following morning, Zane was just about to head into town when it occurred to him he should check the cat trap before he left. Leaning down to peer under the tractor, he thought for a moment the trap was empty until an inky shadow moved. A pair of bright green eyes regarded him and a sharp hiss greeted him. Hello, he murmured, reaching under the tractor to grab the trap and pull it out into the light. None of that now, if you please, as the cat attempted to swipe at him with sharp claws. Well, I don't know if you're the mom cat or not, but those look like two very triangular, untipped ears, so I think you'd better come with me into town 
and Hannah can arrange for you to have a spa day. The cat was small, not much bigger than a kitten, and apparently furious. Remembering how Hannah had covered the kitten's carrier to settle them down, he put a spare goat blanket over the trap before loading it into the rear seat of his truck. The shelter was on the outskirts of Leavenworth, sandwiched between a gas station and some storage units. It wasn't much more than a couple of industrial sheds and a fenced area behind, which was presumably used for exercising dogs. Zane pulled into the parking lot and carried the trap to the door with the reception sign above it. Hi! The older lady sitting behind the desk inside looked up at him with a bright smile. And who do we have here? She looked at the cat trap. Possibly the mother of the kittens Hannah brought in a couple of days ago. Oh, excellent! Bring her through here to intake, would you? The woman showed him through into a small room with a couple of plastic chairs and a table in the middle, and not much else. I'll find Hannah for you. I'm right here, Jody, Hannah said, entering the room. Definitely not Mr. Magoo this time, Zane, she asked teasingly. Definitely not. He pulled back the goat blanket. The black cat hissed. Hmm, you might be right. Hannah stooped to look. Definitely a female, and she might be lactating too. Want to sit in while I do intake, and we can see if she's keen to be reunited with the kittens? They're doing okay, but a bit more mother's milk would do them some good. Sure. He took a seat and watched as Hannah armed herself with a towel and deftly scooped the hissing cat out of the trap. I think she is the mama, Heather said a few minutes later, looking up at him. Let's find out for sure. She put the cat into a carrier and gestured him to follow her. Zane trailed along as she led him into a back room with several large pens lining the walls, opened one and put the carrier inside. The cat immediately began to purr as she smelled her kittens and recognised their sounds. Zane watched as the mother cat licked and nuzzled the little creatures, snuggling them close to her belly. It looks like we've got a happy family reunion here, Hannah said with a smile. Thanks for bringing her in, Zane. We'll make sure she gets all the care she needs. Zane nodded, feeling a sense of relief. No problem. It was the least I could do after the help you gave me with the goats. Hannah smiled, her eyes sparkling in the dim light of the room. Well, speaking of the goats, I promised to show you our resident herding dog. Zane's heart skipped a beat at the mention of spending more time with Hannah, and he couldn't help but feel a sense of excitement at the prospect of seeing her again. I'd love that. Hannah led him through to a different part of the shelter and up to a large pen where a black and white collie was sitting, alertly watching the world pass by. This is Pepe. Hey, boy. Hannah took a dog treat from a container by the wall and offered it through the cage mesh. The dog took the treat delicately from her fingers, large brown eyes watching them. He's an absolute sweetheart and he has a great herding instinct. The dog stood up then and Zane's eyebrows went up. And he's only got three legs. It doesn't slow him down much, I promise. Hannah winced slightly. He ended up here after getting hit by a car. I don't think he's suitable to be a family pet type, and none of the big industrial-scale farmers will take him, but I thought, you don't have a lot of goats. I do have more coming in the spring, Zane said, but he knew he was already a goner. He was a sucker for big, sad brown eyes, and Pepe really was a gorgeous dog. Hey, boy. He bent down, making his voice soft. What do you think of goats, eh? Pepe sniffed at his hand through the mesh, gave a quick lick to his fingers, and just like that, Zane knew he now had a dog as well as eight goats and at least one feral cat. As he stood up, he caught Hannah's eye, and he knew she could see the excitement in his expression. I think I'll take him, he said. Hannah's smile widened. I'm so glad. He's a good dog, and I think he'll be perfect for you and your goats. Zane nodded, feeling the weight of the responsibility of caring for Pepe settle over him. I'll take good care of him. I know you will, Hannah said, 
her voice softening. And hey, if you need any help with him or anything else, just let me know. Zane felt a jolt of attraction shoot through him at her words, and he knew he wanted to see her again, outside of the shelter. Actually, I was thinking, would you like to grab that coffee now? Then I can fill in your paperwork and take Pepe home with me later. Hannah's eyes lit up. I'd love that. The witch's brew was only a couple of blocks away, but snow was falling again, so Zane suggested he drive, and Hannah agreed cheerfully. They found a table in the busy bar, ordered coffee and pie from a friendly server, and sat back to chat. Zane had noticed just about everyone in the place nodded or waved to Hannah as they came in. Most of them had probably been conned into adopting at least one animal from her shelter, he guessed. Except the two young guys at a neighbouring table, both busy avoiding her eye. Hannah ignored them, too. He figured they must be strangers, perhaps new to the area, like him. It was a pleasure to talk with Hannah. She told him a little about herself, how her parents ran the local produce store, where he could get goat feed and the supplies he'd need for Pepe, and her uncle and aunt were the local veterinarians. A career with animals had been somewhat inevitable. You didn't want to be a veterinarian yourself, he asked curiously. Not book smart enough, she shrugged. I'm a qualified vet nurse, and I help with the practice. It must be handy to have vets in the family when you're running an animal shelter, Zane mused. I'll need to get their number from you. Sure, I've got cards back at the rescue. I'll give you one. She leaned her chin on her hand. So, you've had my life story. How did you end up here with a herd of goats? A roundabout way, he said with a grin. My parents have been breeding goats for years, and my sisters have both followed in their footsteps. I took a different path for a while, went to business school, and then got into finance. Finance? Hannah tilted her head at him curiously. Cryptocurrency trading, to be precise. Hannah's eyebrows shot up. Forgive me, but cryptocurrency trading? What is a crypto bro doing out here in the back of beyond with a herd of goats? Former crypto bro, he corrected, not offended by the question. I retired. Made quite a lot of money first, but one day I just woke up and had an epiphany that I absolutely hated my life and almost all the people in it. Wow. So you went back to your roots? That's right. Home to the family farm in Oregon. My eldest sister is taking it over after my parents. My younger sister and her husband have started a sister farm in Montana, so I thought I'd start another one up here in Washington. I've got a couple local contacts for products, a dressmaker who wants to work with Angora wool to make knits, and a soap maker who will make goat's milk soap. How many goats are you planning to run? Hannah asked. Eventually, maybe a hundred. I've got more than enough land for them, nearly eighty acres, but I'm going to need to do some fencing work before I bring in more. Nice. Hannah rose to her feet. Excuse me a moment. He watched her walk away towards the bathroom, admiring the back view in tight blue jeans. You'll want to steer clear of that one, buddy, one of the young men at the next table said suddenly. Excuse me? Zane gave him a raised eyebrow. Gold digger, the young man said and sniggered. She spotted you for wealthy right off that nice truck of yours. Just watch yourself. The two men got up and left as Hannah returned to the table, both of them carefully not meeting her eye. Do you know those two guys who just left? Zane asked as Hannah sat back down. The Caulfield brothers? Unfortunately. Why? They said something mean about you. She laughed. I bet they did. Did they tell you about the dog fights they were hosting in their backyard? Or that I pushed for prosecution and that they legally may no longer own any animals at all? That sounded a whole lot more likely than a woman who had dedicated her life to animal rescue being a gold digger. Relieved, Zane nodded his comprehension. The server stopped by then to see if they needed anything else, and Hannah asked for the cheque, pulling some bills from her purse to cover her half. 
I asked you out for coffee. Let me cover it, Zane offered. If you want, but I'll get it next time. He felt a warm glow at the suggestion there would be a next time. You're on, he agreed. Now, how about you direct me over to the produce store, and you can introduce me to your mum and dad, and I can stock up on goat feed and gear for Pepe. Chapter 4 A week later, Hannah was driving past Zane's farm when she saw two men putting a sign up beside the gate. Gold's goats, she read, and grinned to herself. On impulse, she turned the wheel and pulled in, telling herself she was just calling in to do a welfare check and see how Pepe was settling in. Hannah hadn't seen Zane all week. She'd introduced him to her parents at the produce store, where he'd bought what seemed like half the store out of dog supplies for Pepe, and then accompanied her back to the shelter to collect the dog. Since then, Hannah had been busy finalising pre-Christmas adoptions, socialising the kittens, rescuing a few animals struggling in the weather, and the general busyness of the shelter. Pulling up in front of the house, Hannah admired the new fencing off to the side of the barn. Zane had certainly not let the snow on the ground slow him down. As she got out of the car, she heard bleating goats and smiled. Walking around the back of the barn, she saw Zane unloading bales of hay from the back of his truck, his breath visible in the cold air. He looked up and grinned when he saw her. Hey there, Hannah. What brings you out here? Thought I'd check in on Pepe and see how your goat empire is coming along, she replied, walking over to him. Zane chuckled. It's still a work in progress, but we're getting there. Pepe is settling in well, by the way. He's been an excellent guard dog for the goats. Hannah nodded, looking around at the herd. They all look happy and healthy. I've no doubt any animal would be safe in your care. About that. He stacked the last hay bale and turned to her, dusting his hands off on the seat of his pants. I've been thinking. Sounds dangerous, she teased, and he laughed, gesturing for her to precede him around to the barn door, where he opened the door to reveal an absolutely adorable sight, the goats all lying comfortably about in the hay, Pepe on guard near the door, and the ginger barn cat, Mr. Magoo, nestled in beside Maid Marian. Oh my goodness, they look like they should be on a Christmas card. Hannah fished her phone out. Do you mind if I take a picture? Not at all. She snapped the picture, then took a second photo with Pepe at the focus to post on the shelter's social media page. I've been thinking, Zane said again, and she turned to him attentively, that I have more land here than I'm going to really use. Ninety acres, and I'm eventually planning to build up to over a hundred goats, but they won't really use even half that space, and there are several sheds I definitely won't use. I couldn't help but notice how cramped the shelter is. I was wondering if you might use some of my sheds as overflow and some of the pasture for any farm animals you rescue. Zane! Hannah's jaw dropped. Are you serious? That would be incredible! He nodded. I am. I know how much you do for these animals, and I want to help in any way I can. Plus, it would give Pepe more company and a purpose. Hannah felt her heart swell with gratitude. Thank you, Zane. That's an incredibly generous offer. He shrugged, a slight blush creeping up his cheeks. It just makes sense to me. You're doing important work, and I have the means to help. Consider it done. They spent the next hour discussing logistics, with Zane showing her around the property and pointing out potential areas for the shelter's use. Hannah couldn't believe her luck. Not only had she met a kind, generous man, but he was also a valuable ally in her mission to help animals. As they walked back to their vehicles, Hannah turned to Zane. You know, it's funny. A week ago, I didn't know you existed, and now you're becoming such an important part of my life. He smiled, seemed to hesitate, and then said slowly, Look, I have an ulterior motive. Hannah cocked her head at him curiously. Not seeing you this last week. That kinda sucked. 
Every day, I had to tell myself I had too much to do here to just jump in my truck and come find you. I was right on the verge of cracking and calling to ask you out to dinner when you drove up today. Hosting some of the shelter's operations here, I guess I felt it'd give me a good excuse to see more of you. Colour flamed in Heather's cheeks, but she held his gaze steadily. He was a little shy, she suspected, and he was putting himself out there with this honest declaration. I'm pretty sure that's not your only motive, she said with a smile, her blush deepening. But I gotta tell you, I'm really happy you offered, because I've been trying to find reasons to see more of you too. Zane's grin widened at her words, and he stepped closer to her. Well, in that case, how about I take you out to dinner tonight, and we can talk more about how we can help each other out. Hannah's heart raced at the thought of spending more time with him, and she nodded eagerly. That sounds great. Good. Zane gazed into her eyes, and Hannah swayed towards him, hoping he'd make a move. It was she who ended up making the move, though, and not by choice, as a sudden blow to her behind sent her stumbling forward. Zane's arms closed around her, steadying her, and he laughed. Marion, you little madam. Did she seriously just butt me on the ass? Heather gave the goat a warning glare. Don't you make a habit of that? I'm not complaining about the result, though, Zane murmured, and Heather looked back up at him. Because I've been thinking about having you in my arms and kissing you since the moment we met. Hannah felt a jolt of electricity run through her at his words, and before she could respond with more than a nod, he closed the distance between them and pressed his lips to hers. It was a gentle, tentative kiss at first, but as they both relaxed into it, it deepened, becoming more urgent. When they finally pulled back, they were both breathless, staring at each other with awed expressions. Well, Zane said, his voice husky, that was definitely worth the wait. Hannah nodded, feeling like she was floating on a cloud. Yeah, it was. She couldn't seem to get the goofy grin off her face. I need to get all these animals fed and then shower and clean up. Zane gestured at his scruffy farm clothes. But could I pick you up in a couple hours, take you out for dinner somewhere? Yes. Wait, no. She hurried on as disappointment clouded his expression. It's Christmas Eve and my parents are having a party tonight. Would you... Would you like to come with me? Zane's eyes lit up. I'd love to. I really liked your parents when I met them at the produce store. They liked you too, Hannah said, with a private grin, as she remembered how her mother had reacted after meeting Zane. Maid Marian bleated loudly just then, lowering her head as though threatening another butt, and Zane moved quickly to put himself between Hannah and the cantankerous goat. Don't you dare, Marion. Zane wagged a finger. I'm going to get your dinner now. Marion made a snorting sort of noise as though doubting him, and Heather giggled. She's definitely a character, isn't she? You have no idea. Zane scratched the goat's head fondly, and she leaned against his leg and bleated softly. I'm not entirely sure I enjoy having to compete with a goat for your attention, Heather teased. Oh, like I don't have to compete with an entire shelter full of animals for yours. Touché. She laughed, but sobered quickly. I think we have a pretty good idea of what matters to each other, don't we? Yes. And I can deal with the shelter being your priority. Animals didn't keep regular schedules. They both knew that. They knew there'd be times when one of them would be dragged out of bed at midnight or missed an important occasion because of some animal emergency. But I also want to make sure that we make time for each other, Zane said, his gaze steady on hers. I don't want us to get so caught up in our work and our passion for helping animals we forget about each other. Hannah felt a warmth spread through her chest and she leaned in to kiss him again, this time more confidently. I don't think that'll be a problem, she murmured against his lips. I'm pretty sure you'll always be on my mind. 
They parted with another soft laugh, and Zane reached for her hand, lacing their fingers together. Come on, let's go feed these guys so we can get cleaned up for the party. As they left the barn, Hannah couldn't help but feel like she'd stumbled onto something amazing. She'd found a man who shared her love for animals, and who was willing to go out of his way to help her. And more than that, she had found someone who made her heart race, and who she was excited to spend time with. As they walked, Zane squeezed her hand, and she knew that this was just the beginning of something special. Together, they would build a life filled with love and adventure, and goats and cats and dogs, and who knew what other animals would come along to brighten their lives. Hannah just knew she was looking forward to finding out. Thank you for listening to Eight Maids a-Milking, A Christmas Romance by Caitlin Lynch. Narrated by Catherine Bilson. Copyright 2023. Audiobook production copyright 2023. For more books by the author, visit CaitlinLynch.com.